Up. Welcome back to yet another episode of Cancel Shweezy, better known as the Lord's Trademark Favorite Podcast. How's everyone doing? Damn, Jackie. I can't control <clears throat> the weather. Happy Memorial Day or post-Memorial Day. I can't remember what date this episode comes out, but happy Memorial Day is now. I think I am supposed to remember, and I think this is Memorial Day, is that you don't thank veterans on Memorial Day. You thank the dead ones. <clears throat> That's what I think you're supposed to do. I hope I'm right. I'm sorry I offended anyone with the military pronouns, but also I kind of feel like I get to be involved with people who have military pronouns because my girlfriend's husband is in <clears throat> the military and serving overseas right now as we speak, fighting for your freedom. So let's show some fucking damn respect this Memorial Day for my girlfriend's husband because she he's out there fighting for your freedom. He's fighting for my right to do his wife. And uh, Here's something to think about. So definitely put yourselves in my shoes and realize the type of person that I am, the type of person I will be and the type of person I am becoming. Because you're not only you're you're offending my girlfriend when you disrespect our troops like that, you know. You know her her husband is fighting. She doesn't know if he's going to come back, and she's just going to get all those rad benefits. So, like, imagine what it's like for her, my girlfriend, when her husband is out out there fighting for freedom. Which means he's probably swiping cards to let someone in on the base. <laughs> this, I mean, that's probably what he's doing. Uh, whatever, you know. You know, when you, th- when you think about, you know, you think about armies and stuff like that. You know, it's not like, you know, when you need when you need a large group of people for one purpose. Not everyone's going to be the sharpest tool in the shed. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of smart people in our military. Like a lot of smart. But not all of them are. You know. So happy Memorial Day, everyone. <laughs> happy Memorial Day. We're remembering everyone. We're remembering good things, right? This is a great way to start a podcast, right? Just making jokes about people dying for your freedom. I will, I will say this, though. Of all the... I've been making jokes like that a while now about uh, the gr- about my girlfriend's husband uh, fighting for your freedom. Made a lot of jokes about that. And the people who were laughing the hardest at those jokes, veterans. The veterans laughed the hardest at those jokes. I don't know why. (laughs) I think it's something inside. I think I've gone too far on the inside uh, to know something or whatever about that. But they always laugh the hardest. And the people who are offended, well, let's talk about the people who are offended. People who are not involved with the military at all. (laughs) The only people... We were like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> like the old people like that. Everyone else is like, ha, 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 ha. That's funny. Because she's, she's cheating on him while he's overseas. It's common. And apparently it has to be pretty common that girls are cheating. When, you, <laughs> when, you're, when you're overseas and you find your girl uh, purchase like forty nine ninety nine from CVS, just the dude crying, it's because it's probably plan B. Everyone, that's pro- I think that's how much that costs these days. I don't know. If you're if you're responsible, that's not a problem. But, <laughs> but it happens. Uh, but yeah, no. And what is it? What is it with certain people? It's like I want to be offended on your behalf. Like you know, it, it it's something you know with like anything like racism and stuff like that. Like it, it it's like yeah, there's offensive things and. It's that, you know, it's those groups of people, like, you're offending, and so it's not cool to do that. You know, we that's how we always say it, is Gengar would like you to know. Uh, but, like, 
you know, and it's like, and there's, there's, there is some, there is something to that. Like, yeah, we should be respectful. We should be kind, you know, tr- not be offensive for, you know, stuff like that, you know. And remember when people are making jokes, they're making jokes. Hopefully they don't believe some of the, everything they say, you know. It's, if they're making jokes, they're making jokes. Don't be, it's not like an education, it's not an education platform. You know, you call them your tits. Uh, I was like, um, but yeah, no, there's something weird about that. Like, you know, it's usually white women. You know, I'm not saying it's all white women. I'm just saying they're the they're the ones doing it. You know, the a certain sect of them are doing it. You know, it's like don't get offended on people's behalf. You sh- you can you should get upset when like someone says something like that and it kind of seems serious. I'm like, bro, that's not a cool thing to say. And then you tell, and it's important to tell them why if they're, if they have any pushback, you should, you should tell them why. And sometimes they'll be like, Oh, why? And you're like, because racism is bad, but I'm not racist. Yeah. But that was a term used as an offensive and demeaning term, you know, and so I was stuck on or whatever, you know, it, but then there's like the manufacturer one, like the R word one, if you don't know the story behind it, there was like parents of a of a girl who was special needs, and like basically what it looked like is that having a special needs daughter made them uncomfortable, and so they decided they wanted to do something about it. So they to make it look like they weren't uncomfortable, and so they decided to be like the R words offensive and like you know. The actual terminology and how it was used was so different, but like there, there's a good point to it. There's like a good point to it all, but it's like, you know, a lot of special needs people didn't think it was about them. Like they didn't think they were making fun of them. They thought they were making fun of their friend for being an idiot. Like that's like, you know, and like it's like people being offended on someone else's behalf. You know, it's just. Crazy stuff. I don't know. I don't know. It's just it, weird. The weird world we live in these days, you know? You know? Uh, it's like, I don't know. Like, we do things. Like, I don't know. Like, it just seems weird to be offended on someone else's behalf, you know? Or whatever, you know? It, it, it's just whatever. Or, you know? I don't know. You guys get on what I'm saying? You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Anyways, I think that's... Yeah. Anyways, I mean, but speaking of speaking of military wife Gorilla Grip, uh, my song Gorilla Grip is out now wherever you stream music at. So definitely go check that out wherever you're streaming music these days. Whether I don't care where you stream music, just stream the song. That's what I want, I want you to listen to me because I think it's a good song. I believe in myself, so you should believe in me too. You can always check on updates from me at the Shweezy Anywhere. Uh, social media is at you'll find me there, and I post regularly, so don't. Don't worry about that. I'm, don't worry about that. So uh, stuff like that. Uh, we do have ways you can help us out and be be. Uh, uh, you can uh, financially support us on Patreon, Cash App, and PayPal are all ways you can donate to the show or financially support the show. Whatever way you kind of want to, whether one recurring payment, multiple, it's whatever you want to do. So definitely something you can do to help out the show and keep it real, keep it tight, keep it tight. Like my new song, Gorilla Grip, out now, wherever you stream music. But, uh, but, uh, but there is free stuff you can do. Uh, make sure you go, uh, if you're listening, make sure you check out our YouTube. We're always trying to infiltrate that algorithm. So, uh, check out the videos, like, subscribe, leave comments, and all that cool stuff. Share with your friends. And, uh, if you're on an audio platform, leave a review and give us a five, four, three, two, or one star rating. So, yeah. So, ha! Got it! Ha! Let's jump into previous week right now. What is previous week right now, you may be asking? Well, we're just going to go over last week's news. And I think we'll do that right now. Might be from other weeks, too. I don't know. Uh, This one's from Variety. Uh, Dan Schneider sues quiet on set producers for defamation, calls Nickelodeon abuse docuseries a hit job. I identify as a fucking threat. Dan Schneider has filed a defamation lawsuit against the producers of the Investigation Discovery docuseries Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, which uncovered alleged abuse and misconduct at Nickelodeon. It became Max's biggest streaming uh, title ever. 
Ooh, I didn't know I was doing that good. The lawsuit obtained by Variety and filed by Schneider's attorney, Jana Mosier and Richard McKee, reads in part, quite on set's portrayal of Schneider is a hit job while it is indisputable that two bona fide child sex abusers worked on Nickelodeon shows. It is likewise indisputable that Schneider had no knowledge of their abuse, was not complicit in the abuse, condemned the abuse once it was discovered, and critically was not a child sex abuser himself, but for the sake of clickbait ratings and views, or put differently, money defendants have destroyed Schneider's reputation and legacy through the false statements and implications about Schneider is exactly that. Quite on set details Schneider's rise as the creator and producer of Nickelodeon shows, including The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, iCarly, Victorious, and more. Former Nickelodeon writers, child stars, and crew members appear in the five-episode series and accuse Schneider of creating a hostile work environment and sexualizing former child actors on television. A representative for Schneider said in the statement to Variety at the time, everything that happened on the show, Dan Ran was carefully scrutinized by dozens of involved adults and approved by the network. If there was an actual problem with the scene that some people now, years later, are sexualizing, they would be taken down, but they are not. They are aired constantly all over the world today, still enjoyed by both kids and parents. Schneider himself said in a video posted after the launch of Quiet On Set, watching over the past two nights was very difficult, facing my past behavior, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. I definitely owe some people a pretty long apology. Strong apology. Schneider's lawsuit claims that the voiceovers and graphics in Quiet On Set, as well as the series trailer, are purposely and intentionally def defamatory in that they falsely and repeatedly state or imply that Schneider is a child sex abuser and committed crimes in this regard, and have been interpreted as such by countless average, ordinary, or reasonable viewers. In a separate statement sent to Variety alongside the legal complaint, Schneider wrote, Recently, the docuseries Quiet on Set highlighted mistakes I made and poor judgment I exhibited during my time at Nickelodeon, most of which happened decades ago during my early career as a producer working on shows for Toll & Robbins Productions. There's no doubt that I was sometimes a bad leader. I am sincerely apologetic and regretful for that behavior, and I will continue to take accountability for it. However, after seeing Quiet on Set and its trailer and the reactions to them, I sadly had no choice but to take legal action against the people behind it and their successful attempt to mislead viewers and increase ratings. They went beyond reporting the truth and falsely implied that I was involved in or facilitated horrific crimes for which actual child predators have been prosecuted and convicted. Schneider continued, I have no objections to anyone highlighting my failures as a boss, but it is wrong to mislead millions of people to the false conclusion that I was in any way involved in heinous acts like those committed by child predators. I owe it to myself, my family, and the many wonderful people involved in making these shows to set the record straight. Variety has reached out to ID, uh, that's Investigative Discovery or whatever, for a comment. In addition to Dan Schneider, Quiet on Set also investigates other people working at Nickelodeon at the time, including dialogue and acting coach Brian Peck interviewed in Quiet on Set is Drake and Josh star Drake Bell, who alleges he was a victim of Peck's sexual abuse in 2003. Peck, 43 at the time, was arrested on 11 charges, including sodomy, lewd acts upon a child, 14 or 15 by a person 10 years older, and oral copulation by anesthesia or controlled substance, but the victim was not previously named. Uh... Quite on set also mentions Jason Michael Handy, a production assistant who was arrested and charged with a lewd act with child under 14. The mother of a former actor who appeared on The Amanda Show claimed on Quiet on set that Handy sent her daughter a photograph of him naked masturbating. Another Nickelodeon staffer animator, Zell Channel, Chanel, Channel, Channel, was sentenced to more than seven years in prison for committing lewd acts on a 14 year old boy and showing him pornography. Uh, if you don't know, we did cover this on the show, so you can definitely check that out and see that if you want to. But what what is interesting, yeah, I the thing is about this, like, I don't think Dan Schneider's a good person, and I don't think the way he acted on some of his sets, you know, was good. But I, I do think here, one thing, that there is a good discussion here coming into this. We we have to take aside, yeah, Dan Schneider's a bad person, and especially Brian Peck and Jason Handy and, you know, Zell Channel or whatever his name is. Uh, you know, like, those guys were bad, and we all know they're bad, and even Dan agrees that they were bad people, and he wishes they didn't happen. The way, but I see his point in what he's talking about, because for the record straight, everyone... I heard weird stories a while ago, like you would have little girls in a pool, they show them their feet. Like, I heard that story, but, that you know, we're, we're talking about this documentary. We're not talking about, like, 
whatever idiot on the internet I listen to <laughs> to get that information in my head. But you, you, but yeah, like the way the documentary was was presented and you know organized. They talked about Dan Schneider's rise to fame. Then they talked about you know Jason Handy and Brian Peck for two episodes. And then the final episode went back, and then it went back to Dan and how it wasn't good working with him. And so, yeah, I can see how it's framed that when Dan, like the start of Dan Schneider to the end of Dan Schneider, you know, with these guys in between, it makes it look like he was like a predator. And and I agree with it. Not, there's nothing, and I agree with him. If there's no evidence or anything, they haven't uncovered anything that would give him that, like he might be. He might be, but there's no, we don't have the evidence yet. So we have to, we have to let the process happen. We got to let people cook. The, the cook, We got to let the chefs cook, as the kids would say. And so, yeah, and I think, I, I see the point here. Like, it's, because, like, if you didn't pay close enough attention to the documentary, because, like, in the documentary and everything, even Drake Bell was like, Dan was actually very supportive at the time, you know, when he heard about that. So part of that part of it makes me strongly lean on the side that he didn't know about these guys because, you know, you, and especially when you're on big sets, like you don't know everything that's going on. And I've talked about like, he put kids in weird situations and they could have come across as sexual, which I think, you know, there's jokes for the older audience and younger audiences. I, I you know, part of me has a mindset, like you're an actor, you're doing a job. People know you're an, a- you're an actor doing this job, you know, and this is a joke and you're in a comedy show, you know, understand that but kids don't know that so that's questionable too and like how should we handle that you know because it's like sometimes you're gonna have to like wear something that makes you look uncomfortable and especially in a comedy like that's gonna happen you know the more uncomfortable you feel the funnier it can possibly be you know so like that and you know like I know at TV networks you know I know enough about the industry to know that like they have like a room full of people that go through every joke and they none of them have a sense of humor so if you've ever try to explain a joke to someone with no sense of humor. It's very difficult. And so, yeah, it had to be run by them. And I don't think anyone would have the power to be like, we can't show this on TV because, like, they find people if they find something like that, you know? So they really do have to look over that stuff. So, you know, it's interesting because, like, I don't think he's good. And I think a lot of what went out in the documentary was accurate, true information. But I can also see, yeah, I can see why how this documentary kind of puts him to get because like it talks about like those three people specifically brian brian peck dan schneider and uh jason handy and then the other guy got like two minutes i don't know why he didn't get much i guess he wasn't like he was i i don't know what he was doing um there's probably more on that but yeah like those two and the other two were like oh what were child predators doing they were at nickelodeon like let's uncover the story and then you learn dan you know just wasn't easy to work with and stuff like that. Uh, Like, it's an interesting, yeah, but, yeah, no, I don't think he knew. In my opinion, I don't think, I'm leaning on the side that he didn't know for how at least supportive he was of Drake, especially, like, he could have possibly known, like, when, like, the police got involved and everything, but, you know, there's other, you know, a million other things that can happen, too. So, like, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning on the side of that because, you know, like, how supportive he was to Drake Bell was so interesting uh, to me. So, yeah, you know, we, you know. You bet I'm coming up in May. We'll be right back. Are you tired of tossing and turning on a mattress that just doesn't cut it? It's time to upgrade to the ultimate sleep experience with Novilla mattresses. Novilla mattresses are designed with your comfort in mind, using innovative technology to provide the perfect balance of support and softness. Whether you prefer memory foam, hybrid, or inner spring, Novilla has the mattress to suit your needs. Say goodbye to the restless nights and hello to the rejuvenating sleep that you've been needing. With Novilla's advanced materials and ergonomic design, you'll wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day. Plus, Novilla offers hassle-free delivery right to your doorstep in a risk-free trial period, so you can sleep easy knowing you've made the right choice. Transform your sleep experience today with Novilla mattresses. Visit novilla.us to explore their range of premium mattresses and start sleeping better tonight. 
Using promo code SHWEEZY or the link in our description, you can save 10% on any purchase through Novilla directly. Ready tr to transform your sleep experience? Visit their website today and choose the Novilla mattress that suits your needs. Your journey to a better night's sleep starts with Novilla mattresses. Try out the mattress that your mom tried out last night. Nice. And a reminder, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Hey, fitness enthusiasts. Are you ready to take your workouts to the next level while making a positive impact on the world? Introducing FNX Fitness, the ultimate destination for high quality supplements and gear that fuels your body and supports your fitness journey. But here's what sets FNX apart. For every purchase you make, FNX donates clean water to communities in need around the globe. That's right, with every protein powder, pre-workout, or apparel item you buy, you're not just investing in your health, you're also helping provide clean, life-saving water to those who need it most. From performance-boosting supplements to durable workout gear, FNX has everything you need to crush your fitness goals while making a difference in the world. And with their commitment to quality and transparency, you can trust that you're getting the best products on the market. So why settle for ordinary supplements when you can support a company that's making a real impact? Head over to evanxfitness.com today to shop their incredible selection and join the movement for a healthier and happier world. Using our link in the description, you can save 15% off your order with FNX Fitness. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. So it's no surprise if you know me, I'm a lover of the 2000s era rom-coms, raunchy rom-coms with the pop punk soundtrack to, you know, not all of them have the pop punk soundtrack, but when they do, they're 10 times better movies. I'm gonna be honest with you. Today I wanna to talk about a movie that's been on my mind a lot lately <clears throat> because I've had Scotty, Scotty doesn't know, stuck in my head, which the story behind that, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit, but the reason why that song's been, the story why it's been stuck in my head is because my friend Josh Casey, author of Tracking Desire, A Journey After Swallowtail Kites, his person, I don't know, he probably annoyed me, he said something to me that annoyed me, and then so I started singing, Josh doesn't know, Josh doesn't know, and then I started off, Josh doesn't know, that is mom and me, do it in my van every Sunday, that was in my head, so I thought it was a good day to talk about Euro Trip, one of the, one of the best raunchy teen rom-coms to ever exist in our world. And it's on the internet somewhere for you to watch. I can't remember where I watched it. But, uh, yeah, so... We got the brownie! All right, let, let's, let's talk about this movie. Let's see what, what happens in this movie, I guess, is what you guys want to know. So we're in the town of Hudson, Ohio, because... Ohio. We meet Scott, or Scotty, and, uh... The beginning of the movie, he is dumped by his girlfriend, Fiona. And... Uh, Fiona is played by Lana Lang, Kristen Couric, or she played Lana Lang in Smallville. So I might just call her that. Uh, and so they, the graduation ends, and then she just breaks up with him and isn't, like, crying or anything. It's like, I'm dumping you. Bye. And there's like, and he's like, oh, man, she broke up with me. That sucks. <laughs> and then immediately after they go to, like, a graduation party, uh, I think, and they're all drinking, which, like, Who's buying kegs for... I know, like, some kids are getting someone to buy them, like, one bottle, maybe, of something, or they may be able to obtain some... I'm like, I don't know who's... Who's buying, like, keg Like, for, like, big parties like that? Like, it requ that, like... I just know about event planning. I'm like, you... There, you need a lot for that. I'm like, how are kids getting this much? You know, that's why it's a movie. It's, it's made up. And so, then a band... And the, the 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 most like the thing about these movies is like they're they're not that good, but they have iconic moments, you know. And I in before memes, we usually just quote movies all the time. And so the band starts playing the song called "Scotty Doesn't Know." So the band Lustra, uh, I guess they were asked to write a song for this movie, and I guess they're like, so it's about. So here's the joke that we want. And then, and then they're like, okay. And then they start where Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. And it's a song about a guy named Scott or Scotty 
who doesn't know that the the singer of the song is banging his girlfriend and he doesn't know anything about it and they're like do, making it so obvious and he's just so clueless about not knowing and uh yeah i mean that's the song so just that song itself in the movie would be hilarious but i guess the story was either matt damon was friends with the director or the band um I want to say one of those two. And uh, what he did was, like, I guess, like, he was in the right place at the right time kind of thing. And so they did a couple takes of, like, the scene with Matt Damon and their, like, improv it, be funny and stuff like that. And then they just, like, filmed the scene. And so Matt Damon is lip singing over the original singer's voice. But the actual band is in the movie as well. And it's just a wild – the song Scotty Doesn't Know is just a wild – song and it's a wild predicament that this movie is set up so like this girl you've been you've been you're a singer of a rock band and you've been seeing this girl who's dating this other guy she and you just obviously know she's cheating on on you on him with you and i guess she's not putting out for him or whatever and so you write a song about it like all you know you write about what you know that's why gorilla grip out now wherever you stream music uh, and so he wrote a song about doing Scotty's girlfriend all the time in front, like in him not noticing that she's cheating it's like that. And so, and he's like, I know. And then Scotty shows up at the party and you're like, I know we got to play this song, <laughs> you know, right in front of him. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, the actor who played Scotty, like he seemed like a nice guy. didn't seem like a violent guy, but like. You know, I'm like the singer, and I'm like, this is about this dude's girlfriend. I'm like, <laughs> I play a song about doing his girlfriend. Like, I'd probably get the shit beaten out of me, you know? It's just wild that how it went the way it went. Like, Scotty didn't cause a whole scene or whatever. Or whatever. Uh, it's just uh, a crazy thing. So then, out of nowhere, so they that was just like a short film in itself. And then we move on to the main plot of this movie, is that, Scotty has been chatting with this girl on a on like the internet. They're like pen pals or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they're writing real letters to each other, and he always liked it. And he thought the care the the person he was chatting with her name was Meek. Scotty, in all his brain cells, who just graduated high school, by the way, uh, he didn't. He thought Mike was a guy, and I guess the photos they sent, like he thought, like. There was like one photo sent, and it was like a girl and a guy, and he thought the dorky guy was Mike. When in reality, she said that that was her cousin, and that she was in the photo with her. She should have just sent a photo of herself, to be honest with you. And so he just thought Mike was like her cousin, guy, some dorky guy, and they for some reason over like this email exchange or whatever, like they kind of had feelings for each other. But like Mike was like, I'm not, or not Mike Scott. He was like, I'm not into dudes. <laughs> And I love Fiona or whatever. And then then he's like sent her a mean thing and like she blocked his email. And then his little brother was like, okay, uh, that's Meek. That's a common girl's name. And he's like, what? Wait, so Meek was the girl? He's like, I think she's the love of my life. And so him and his best friend Cooper at that point decided like, I got to go to Europe and can profess my love to her because apparently she likes him back. I guess we already, we're just assuming she likes him back. That's all we're assuming. No, no crazy twist in this movie folks. I'm sorry to tell you. Um, so yeah, Cooper and, and Scotty decided to go to Europe to, uh, apologize in person and be romantic to Meek, who now Scotty realizes the love of his life after thinking, very shortly before thinking Fiona was the love of his life and they were going to get back together. So first they go to like, they go to like, they, they were like, let's go to a local, let's go to a local pub. And they run into, they go into like a private club for Manchester United football fans. They're like, let's go along with it. And then they make up a song and they're like, and they're like, the Manchester United, they're the best. And then like, there's like a clearly made up song. And then the guys that are like, that was pretty good. And, <laughs> <laughs> they just party it all night. They're like, and then they get on their bus. They go somewhere else in Europe because they could only get to London. But the thing is about Europe is you can get somewhere else pretty quickly if you're smart about it. You can go to um, if you have to take like a train. I guess that's what you do. Uh, yeah. Then they uh, they meet up with Jenny and Jamie, like two twins. Now Jenny is the hot one, and then Jamie is like a nerd or whatever. And so they're traveling Europe over the summer, and they they decide to meet up and 
take on this adventure together with them to find Meek. And the group travels to Amsterdam. Uh, Jamie, or J- he's like a nerd the whole movie. Then he gets he gets blown in like and robbed in an alley because uh, this lady at a camera shop sucks him off or because he has a nice camera. It's like so funny. He's like, it's just the whole demeanor change. He's like Tiger Woods after a win. It's like, they're like, oh man, understand. I understand that. Uh, and then, uh, but they end up in like Bratislava, which I'm assuming is a made up country. And they're like, oh man, we only have like a dollar 70 something or like something like that with them. I don't know how we're going to make it the rest across Europe. And then they're like, oh, the exchange rates because this country fucking sucks. And they're like, it's like, oh, we can be like, we can like really go like spend 10 grand and like on an American night, you know, to party really hard. Like you could do that uh, for less than a dollar in another country. He like tips a guy with a nickel and he's like, I'm going to build my own hotel. I was like, do ex- I don't think exchange rates work like that. I'm just laughing at the joke, but like that'd be wild. I could just go to like just some poor country and be like with like thirty dollars, be like I'm set for a couple of years. I'm set for a couple of years here. <laughs> um, whatever. Yeah. And so after that, oh yeah, they drink absinthe too, and that was funny. Uh. Like, uh, the next day with all their money, they still have a, like a Slovak man drives them to Berlin. And I think that's no Berlin gets them to Berlin, which is wrong. And then they have to get to Rome cause she's on a little tour thing with the Vatican. Oh no, she's from Berlin and they meet her family or whatever. And they're like, Oh, Meek is in Rome right now because she was going to see you for this. I don't know what accent I'm doing. She's going to see you for the summer. But since you said no and you 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 uh, played yourself, uh, congratulations, you played yourself. She's in Rome, and then she's gonna leave and not come back. Some bull, some dumb fucking shit. And like, oh no, we gotta go to Rome. And then they go to the the Vatican City, and they like they fuck a bunch of shit up. Like they put on the Vatican, they ring like the bell. Uh, which signals the Pope died, and then, like, he puts on the hat or whatever as a joke, and then they are roughing around. And then, like, the the fire that says a new Pope has been picked has come out, and then he walks out, too, and everyone thinks he's the new Pope. Like, that's so dumb. And then he eventually tells me he loves her, and, you know, happy ending, you know. Uh, you think, you know, and stuff like that. And so... Yeah, and so no one no one cares about the whole Pope shit. Somehow that he just like it was for love, so we don't care. And uh yeah, that's that's pretty much the movie. Oh yeah, he goes off to college and he thinks Meek's going somewhere else and then uh and then yeah, and then he finds out his new roommate's Meek because they thought Meek was a was Mike too. And so the full story comes full circle. So he gets a hot lady as his roommate that he is in love with and he is 18 years old. That is horny man that's got that that room is just filled with fluids you got you know that room's just filled to the brim with fluids you know like if you slip and fall you gotta you gotta take one of those showers they make you take when you get chemicals on something you know you gotta take one of those take one of those types of showers and yeah but anyways though that was that was it was a Euro trip, folks. I hope you I hope you enjoyed it. Crazy movie. Is it good? No. But sometimes it's not about a movie being good. I think I've, I said this. I don't know what episode I said this. I may say this where everyone's expecting every movie to be just like the best thing they ever saw. I'm like, why can't we just sit back and enjoy a movie like and just like, you know, it's probably not going to be that good. But let's en- let's enjoy the ride. It's like I don't know who's sitting there just like, I hate this. I hate this. Like, if you watch a movie like that, you're going to have a bad time. So, yeah, I enjoy this. I, I watched others recently. I was like uh, Road Trip. That movie was pretty good. Watched that. Sex Drive. That was good. Follow Boys and Sex. I love it when a band's in the movie. Like that, and especially like a band that becomes iconic and they're in that movie. I'm like, Fall Out Boy is so big now, and, like, back then, like, you know, a lot of people liked them, and they were getting, they are like, popular and on the radio, but, like, you know, like, they haven't been around for that long, so, like, 
now they've been around for a while. Like, in looking back, I'm like, they got it right the first time. You know? They could have been just like any, just actors being pretend musicians, but they got a real band, and it paid off. And like, and I think that really is helping a lot of these movies, you know, looking back at all these movies, and you're know, like, oh yeah, Fall Boys in that movie. I, let's watch that, you know? So yeah, no, that, those are weird movie rants. Don't, everyone, when you watch a movie... Don't expect every movie you ever watch ever to be the greatest movie ever. Like when you watch a Marvel movies, don't expect, you know, when Avengers Secret Wars and Avenger King Dynasty, if it's still going to be called that, come out and like it doesn't have a lot of hype and it isn't like the best thing. Like those are the movies like the that you want to be the best thing ever. But don't expect like every movie in between, you know, that are just one character to be the best thing ever. You know, they're building a universe. It has to be that way. And uh, let's go full throttle. Let's go full throttle. Tell me, I would love another raunchy teen comedy to watch because I would, I love watching that shit. And I haven't, I haven't forgotten about American Pie yet to rewatch it. So please, please also tell me what you want me to watch too. We'll be right back. Let's talk about the app that's revolutionizing the way that we handle money. Cash App. Whether you're splitting the bill with friends, paying rent, or even buying stocks, Cash App makes managing your finances fast, simple, and secure. With just a few taps on your phone, you can send money to anyone, anywhere, instantly. But Cash App is more than just a money transfer service, it's also your gateway into the world of investing. With Cash App Investing, you can buy and sell stocks, Bitcoin, and more, all from the convenience of your mobile device. And here's the best part. Cash App is committed to financial empowerment. That's why they offer features like Cash Boost, where you can get instant discounts at your favorite stores and restaurants, just for using your cash card. So whether you're sending money to family, investing for the future, or simply looking to save a few bucks on your next purchase, Cash App has you covered. Luckily, the best part is, if you sign up today using the link in our description, you yourself, I'm talking about you, can get $5 just for signing up. That literally is free money. Cash App, the money app that works for you. And when you use our links, you directly support this show. Let me ask you something. Who doesn't love saving money? With Honey, you can say goodbye to endless searching for coupon codes and hello to instant savings every time you shop online. Honey is the free browser extension that automatically finds and applies the best coupon codes at checkout, saving you time and money on all your favorite sites. Whether you're shopping for clothes, electronics, or even ordering food delivery, Honey has got your back. But that's not all. When you sign up for Honey using the link in the description, you'll unlock even more benefits like exclusive discounts and cashback rewards on your purchases. So why wait? Join millions of savvy shoppers who are already saving with Honey. Download the Honey browser extension and start putting money back in your pocket today. And don't forget to sign up using the link in the description to access extra perks and maximize your savings. Happy shopping. Honey, the smart way to shop online. And also don't forget, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Oh no! Our table! It is time for Oh No Our Table, the part of the podcast <clears throat> where I give you advice on your problems and tell you what to do. So, uh... Well, let's just jump into it. All right. <clears throat> Theoretically, if I had a girlfriend... <laughs> Would it be more acceptable to wank your shit to gay porn or straight porn? I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. All right. Well, <clears throat> well, I don't know. I feel like sometimes some. I think porn is necessary. You know, uh, we just have to remember it's not real, and there's there, and this is not how the world works. We just have to remember that. And then after that, you know. Porn can be real. Then, then have fun with porn. Just <clears throat> you gotta r- have realistic expectations on that. Uh, so yeah, you know, I think I think porn in relationships the problem becomes like when you choose porn over your partner. You know, it's like you know you decided to be together because one you can fuck each other. So uh, yeah, sometimes it, it makes but gives a good meaning for the things. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it's probably more acceptable for it to be straight porn because 
because I get, I would assume if you're caught jerking it, you have to assume what are you caught looking at? Like this is the assumption. Uh, what, what if your partner finds you catching it? When if it's straight porn, you know your partner. They they usually just get self conscious. That's what that's women. You know, we we all know who women women are. You know, feel like a woman, a real woman. Uh, so but if she catches you with gay porn, she's gonna be like, "Is he closeted gay?" You know, and like, like I don't want to be with you know. And I think I think it's acceptable to be like. I don't know if I want want to be with a gay man who's not attracted to me. You know, it's it's a situation. So, your answer is going to be why am I answering this is beyond me. But uh, you should you it, straight porn. If you're straight and you're in a straight relationship, look at straight porn. You know, unless you guys unless there's something weird together, which that's that's your own business. Please keep it to yourself because I do not need to know about it. Um, and yeah. Next one. Girl said we should go out and then apparently forgot about it. A coworker suggested going to a restaurant, but when asked about it later, she seemed confused and unsure. It's unclear if she's still interested. Should I ask her again or wait for her to make a move? I'm not looking for a serious relationship, just a friends with benefits arrangement. Okay, well, you, <laughs> you ruined your question. With the, I just want a friends with. I'm just. I'm not looking for a serious relationship. Just friends with benefits. Um, that changes this game. Let's pretend that you're really wanting to go. First of all, ride or die, bitch. With this woman. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, the the thing that it says is, you know, you know, if part of me feels like, oh, if it wasn't, it doesn't seem like a priority to her, and you deserve to be a priority, king. Uh, you, you know, like when you want to be someone's priority in a relationship, right? And if she is interested in you, she will make you a priority. Never settle for anything less, Kings. And yeah, the fact that she forgot and is unsure about it, like we did schedule it, you know, if, if she was interested and it wasn't honest mistake, I've noticed that like re cause I'm big on like, I, I'm really, I really hate it when people are flaky on me, you know, you know, like you check in, like, are we still on for tonight? And then they just don't respond. I'm like, just should have just told me that you're, you know, I don't know, just be on. I don't, there's a better thing. Just, I just want people to commit, uh, commit to things. And we, our words mean something. Uh, and so, yeah, so it doesn't seem like you're, so yeah, she seen it when someone has to cancel, Usually they would be like, let's schedule it. They would immediately say, can we schedule for another time and like try to figure out an actual date? Because if you are in there and it was an honest mistake, they usually do like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I guess I just forgot. My bad. And if they just do that, I'm like, okay, like you don't care. Like it, 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 that's just, that's the type of thing, you know, move on. But you're also looking for a friends with benefits arrangement. So. Ask her if she wants to do that and see if she's cool with it. I never know how to get into those, really under, understand it. It's more like a relationship with strings attached for me. I don't know. Like I never, like, we're just going to do, do this for fun and not do all the gross relationship stuff. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. You know, just, just do all the fun stuff. That's my hole. That, that's where it spits. All that stuff. I never know. I never know how to help with that. Don't ask me. Oh, whatever. So, and that's that. <clears throat> How can you tell if your mental health has worsened again, and what are the ways you cope with it? I think my mental health is declining again, and right now I'm struggling how to cope. I've tried different ways, but I don't know what to do. I can't see a future anymore, and I've become more selfish, wanting to isolate myself from everything. Any advice you could give me would be appreciated. All right, so how can how can you tell... Um, there's two ways you can tell. One, you feel it. Uh, your brain kind of will let you know if you're not doing good. And then the other way is if you you start projecting in other weird ways, you know. And that's why it's always good to have fr good friends who notice, you know, they they understand who you are, but then, like, 
when something changes, you know, it's that's something to be aware of. And sometimes it's like, oh, well, you're regressing or something, some bullshit, you know, or, you know, you're getting angry all the time. What is this? You know, like, yeah. And then, like, okay, I don't, I don't know if I'm mentally doing good. And therapy is a good way to help. I know it's not the best way or even an option for someone to be able to get for most people, but uh, it is good to kind of talk out your problems or like figure out a way to get it out or like journaling or like write some songs or some, some something gay, you know, like write a song. Uh, and yeah, um, yeah. And then another, another thing I would suggest for you to do is to uh, bring, um, I don't know what am I trying to say? Think about like something you're looking forward to or something you want to work towards to do. That sometimes can help you when we like go on for a little bit more and stuff like that. And uh yeah. Um so yeah, you either know or you don't know. And if you don't know, you're hopefully you have people in your life who will tell you that something's changed with you and you're you've been acting weird and stuff like that, you know, different from your normal uh, or baseline like that. So, you know, we all struggle to cope with how, what we do. So not all of us can just drink all the time, you know, and, and whatever. So, yeah. And another thing, we'll, we'll end on a funny note because this is a funny show. Uh, if you, if you, if you unfortunately leave us in a way, a self way, uh, at your funeral, people you don't like, Okay, remember, the pe- people you don't like, think about the people you don't like, they're going to say that you're a light, you were such a light at your own funeral. People you don't like, okay? And so that's why it's always important to remember, you live in spite of those bitches, okay? All right? All right? Oh my gosh, so deep. I fucking love it. Deep thought right there. That would have been good for the... The emo music <laughs> too that ran. Um, would you rather write songs like Paul McCartney or Elliot Smith? Okay, loaded question because Elliot Smith is just like a poet, and then Paul McCartney just knows how to write a good, just a good fucking song. So it's more of like, would you rather write songs that are like pop hits that are good and even can still have some emotional depth to them, or could you write songs like Elliot Smith was just like this raw punk energy Well, he wasn't punk, but like he, I would consider him a punk, but not punk music. That's how I'd consider Elliot Smith. And with him, it's like his song's so deep and layered and he's just like here to think. And Elliot Smith really, he hated doing live shows. He just wanted to record and write music. And like, that's what really shines through where Paul is kind of an all around, like what, like what everyone dreams of doing, you know, that's what Paul McCartney is. And so I really wouldn't – I'd probably pick Paul just because I think I could still write the music I wanted to write. But ideally, I would love to be able to write lyrics like Elliot Smith, but music like Paul McCartney. That would be my real dream right there. How the fuck are morbidly obese police officers allowed to keep their job? <laughs> I just watched some video of a very unathletic, slow, drunk white girl run laps around two fat police officers in Corpus Christi. That sounds just like Tuesday in Corpus Christi. Like, how are they allowed to still be officers with a three-digit BMI? So, yeah, I think we talked about... We, I kind of touched on this a little earlier, but, you know, we talked about the military. It's like, you know... We we get a lot of smart. We get the some of the smartest people in the military, but then we get some dumb dumbs too. Because sometimes we need those people. You know, sometimes like there's a possibility there's people not coming out alive, and so we're, like we're not going to send the best of society out there. You know, <laughs> sorry for those of you, so those who apply, but like. Yeah, I'm not saying, like, military people are dumb. Like, they, the smartest people in the United States are in the military, like, probably in the world, too. So it's like, you know, it's just like, it's a it's a whole range of people. Just because someone's in the military doesn't mean they're, like, a fucking badass. It just means, like, I don't know, we're going to throw you in to die sometime, you know? Or we're going to have you mop the floors for us. 
you're a janitor. You're like, I'm a veteran. Shut the fuck up. You're a janitor. Uh, uh, but yeah, but uh, really what police officers have becoming is like a military, like its own military force in a way, you know, and they're protecting like the rich people of the world, you know, and helping live in their society. It's like, it's not uncommon for like, yeah, you see a nice car, you don't pull them over because uh, there are people with a lot of money and they could be, they could really mess us up, you know, because they know they could probably get a good lawyer too and stuff like that. Who's just leave them alone. Try to go for the poor people, you know? It's like almost their own military that that they're forcing upon you. It's like, it's very crazy. And like we know with the military, as we've been talking about, Sometimes you just need soldiers. Sometimes you don't you don't need the the best and the brightest, you know. There's like there's like one genius detective to like 30 f- fat fucking pigs, you know. It's just I mean I just it's just how it is. The world isn't as cool as we you know, it's like, you know, I believe that like what the news is telling us isn't always true, but like I don't think it's some grand weird conspiracy, you know. For the most of it, I kind of think it's just like the truth is boring. And if we're watching it from like an, because, you know, newspapers, television, like blogs, websites, like they're all entertainment, you know? And so they have to give you the most, everything in the most entertaining way possible to keep you watching and keep you coming back and investing in bullshit, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, I just think it's probably more, it's everything's more, everything isn't what it always seems, but it's not a weird, crazy conspiracy. It's probably just boring for the most part. That's how it is. What's something that really upped your game as a musician on your journey as a musician? What was slash were some things that really leveled you up? I would love to hear your experiences and details uh, of how it made you better. Um, I really think one thing that really upped my game when it comes to that was, uh, I think really, just doing it a lot, playing with people a lot. Um, you know, it's like I talk a lot of shit about church, but I, I, I'm a better musician for it, you know, for how, you know, I played there a lot, you know, I played in the big ones, the small ones, like some with the worst people. I can't believe even had the courage to be like, I'm going to play an instrument in front of people like now, like people like, like, you know, it's like, I'm not afraid to put myself out there, but like, I don't want to, I don't want to look go out there and look just horrible, you know, and, like, make myself look bad, you know, at the same time. You know, it's like, I want to put myself out there, but, like, I also have worked on it a lot, so much in my life, you know, and I've done it so many times. You know, they say 10,000 hours to get good at anything. And with music, it's more than just, like, being good at your instrument. Like, being a musician means, oh, I can record. Like, I know what I need to do to go into the studio and record, uh, record a band, like how to play to a click, you know, and stuff like that. And then like, if you want to be a live musician, like how to play with a band, you know, sometimes you could be in a revolving door musicians and everyone always plays a little bit different. So you have to have that mindset of how can I adjust this when I need to adjust at little things and how like a drummer, like different drummers, like they, they can play the same thing, but they groove differently. And if you're playing like bass, you have to understand that as well. So you only can really learn that from time spent on it. And that's why I think that 10,000 hour rule, like it has a lot of good merit to it. I don't know if it's like you have to be at exactly 10,000 hours. I think that's just the mindset. You just need to do it so many times. And like, you've done it so much that you've surpassed 10,000 hours. Basically what that means is you're an expert. I don't think it's like a line, but like probably by that point you've, you've done it. And that's how, what I, you know, what I think just do it a lot and keep practicing and and I guess do it a lot but also learn from that doing that even if it's just like you and some friends getting together to jam you're like you, you jam out you hear it and you're like what did I learn like huh you know understanding how your guitar amp works if you want to be a guitar player is very important because you want you want your, you want your guitar to sound good and you want it to be able to cut through and it doesn't have to be super loud to you know it's like being able to understand how to set it up where it cuts through and it sounds good. And when the guitar sounds good, the band sounds good, you know, that's how it is. So think about that. Just do it a lot. Learn, learn as you go along, as you do it too. And last but not least, uh, I hooked up with my brother's best friend and now he only texts me what's up when he wants some. How do I ghost him? 
First of all, don't ghost people. Ghosting people is dumb, it's bad, it's mean, and everyone, if, if we were all just fucking grew the fuck up, we would realize that ghosting people is just the worst because you don't want to be ghosted yourself, and we also know that you should treat others the way you want to be treated. So if you don't like being ghosted, you shouldn't ghost another person because no one likes being ghosted, but we're okay with doing it to people. We shouldn't do that shit, okay? So here's what you can do. He's your brother's best friend. So what I want to tell you is he's pro- if you're still going to be friends with your brother and have a relationship with your brother, he's probably going to be around. So you're going to have to have a conversation with him, as in you hooked up and he only texted me like, hey, you got to stop texting me when you want some, okay? That was a one-time thing. I don't think it's going to happen again. Clearly, it's not going to happen, you know? And, uh, yeah, just simple shit like that will get you far. Who, who, who knew just t- communicating properly, you know? And trying to communicate effectively in a way that people respond to. Like, if you know a person, if you say it this way, they're not going to like it. But if you figure out how to word it correctly, it can go over okay. And sometimes you just have to have tough conversations with people. And they're not easy and they're not fun, but we need to do it. That's what we need to grow the fuck up and do it. You know, I'm talking to grow the fuck up as also real grown adults. If you're a kid, you're learning. I don't know. But anyways, though, that's this episode of Cancel Shweezy. Thank you so much for checking out the show. I really appreciate you guys sticking through the whole thing, especially these people who actually are listening to it old school, the way podcasts used to be with no, not my face on it. You just seem the album cover of the Cancel Shweezy artwork for the podcast or whatever. So thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Go stream Gorilla Grip. It's out now. I really would love for that, too. Honk if you love butt drugs, and stay awesome. I saw the picture of her inside your house And now I'm getting her to take off her blouse The way she smiled when I said she's 24 She's got a body that makes jaws hit the floor Your mom crushed my DS with her ass Her gorilla grip made it hard to last Gave her back shots while playing Blink 182 If things go right, you'll call me daddy too 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 Hello, you just finished a full episode of Cancel Sweezy. That means that I love you. And if you made it here, that means I love you even, even more. Because you finished the entire episode. You're listening to me talk right now. So you're still continuing to hear me talk. So that is awesome. I'm very happy that you listened. I am very appreciative that you guys listened. Make sure that you're subscribed. It not only guarantees that you never miss an episode of this show, but you can see us in your feeds, whether it's on YouTube or any of the millions of audio platforms that we are available on. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode of what you're doing. And, you know... Make sure you check out our YouTube page as well, because if you're just listening, you're missing out on so much more that is also on our YouTube page. I personally appreciate all of your support, and I'm just happy that you are along for this silly type of journey we call this podcast. And uh, thank you for subscribing. Just make sure you don't forget that. And thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you.